Good evening, everyone. I'm Sherry, the dog behaviorist, and I wanted to talk to you tonight about what I refer to as incremental training. Now, incremental training can be about anything. It just doesn't have to be just about dog training, but it, it can be about the way you basically set up your, your life and your expectations of what you're trying to do and, be, and become better at. So one of the things that I find that um, tends to slip people up is that they ask too much of themselves too soon. So they set a goal that's unattainable or it's just it's not attainable in the time frame that they allow themselves. So I'm, I'm going to show you, um, there's a little dog I have down here at the end of this leash. His name is Elliot and he's adorable. And I deliberately didn't train him today so that I could get sort of a fresh dog to work with. But I want to explain to you how the, the principle of incremental training uh, from my perspective works, that I ask for a little at a time from, from a dog and then I, I celebrate the success each time, okay? So here's Elliot and he's just a little a little guy here. Hope you can see him. Hope I have my camera set up right. Do I? Yes, I do. Okay. So as you can see, <laughs> he has worked on place before. So all my dogs, this is one of my, uh, my biggest principles of my training is that the place command is such an essential fundamental principle of dog training and it's some, it's to me, the place board represents a place, and what I want this to, to represent to my dogs is a place that they can go to that is no longer a physical place, but it's a psychological place. And what it represents is, with the, just the one word place, that means go there, stay there, relax there, calm down there, chill out there. Everything that's good, it, it's like a zen-like environment for, for the dog. So I always tell my students and my clients, basically, that there are three places that their dog can go where he will always be safe and where everything will always be okay. And this is a principle that will help your dog to develop trust towards you and, and really deepen the bond between the two of you, is that there's three places, his crate, by your side, and on his place, okay? So there's, there's a way more to this, but you have to get the fundamental principle down first and you have to know how to use it right. I never, ever, ever punish a dog for not complying with the place command thoroughly. In other words, if a dog gets off the place, I gently guide him back to the place. Because in my opinion, I, I truly believe that if a dog doesn't comply with something, a command that you give him, it's not because he's trying to be just blatantly um, non-compliant, it's that, that you haven't made it clear what you want with the dog, that there's just a basic lack of understanding somewhere. The dog just doesn't get it yet. Maybe he'll get it tomorrow, maybe he'll get it in an hour from now but he doesn't get it yet. So our job, it's incumbent on us to explain to the dog exactly what it is that we want him to do. So a little Mr. Elliot here, Mr. Adorable, all of, he, he loves the place work. So I'm gonna, but I haven't worked him today because I wanted to keep him fresh as I said. So what I'm gonna do with Elliot is I'm gonna pretend that he's never done anything on place work before. So I'm gonna lead him over to his place. Elliot, place. And with one word, you notice that I said the word place just before he got on the place, right? So right now he's scenting the board because obviously other dogs have been on here. They could, he can smell that, so he's interested in that. So I have two options. I can either wait until he smells it out and he's uh, happy with, <laughs> with his, the little scent thing that he's done and then he relaxes on his own, or I can help him out a little bit. I can help him sit. He's a little bit of a squirrel, so sometimes he'll, he'll get playful. He'll think that's, that means to play. But I can just, he's very used to me giving him some spatial pressure right there. Look, I get like total eye contact with him, which is great. So if I was just starting this activity off with him, then what I would do is I would just keep the end of the leash here. This is one of our amazing Lucas Agnew leashes, by the way. And I would walk a little distance from him, right? I don't know if you can hear the chorus in the background, but all the dogs are howling in my house. So I'm walking a, a little distance from him and I'm giving him the, the option to break the, the command, right? And if he does, then I'm just gonna gently ask him to go back on again. And, and each time that I do this, I vary it a little bit. I spend more time uh, keeping him on here before I ask him to come off or, or allow him to come off. And I also move further away from here. So each time I'm upping the challenge. So let's, let's speed this up a little bit and, and make this be like the, uh, a speed course because <laughs> I can't keep you here all day. So now I'm gonna wait until I get eye contact from him right there. I want him to sit again a little bit. There you go. And now I'm, when he looks at me, I'm gonna go, let's go. So Elliot comes off the place, right? And now I'm gonna put him back on again. Place. Now, when I refer to incremental training, 
What I mean by that is that I'm going to up the challenge each time, but I'm not going to ask too much for myself, okay, as a, as a client or a student or even a trainer, even a trainer, even me, training dogs. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm not going to ask for too much, and what I'm going to basically do is set myself up and my dog up for success and not failure. So instead of asking for this, this um, exercise to be done 100% perfectly, I'm going to say today what I want to achieve is I want to achieve 40% perfection with him. Okay? So then if I go out and I actually achieve 40%, then I've achieved 100% of what I wanted to get. So that's a, a huge confidence builder for me and a confidence builder for the dog. So my next step that I'm going to do, and as I said, in increments, I'm not going to ask too much for him, especially the first time, because I don't want to work him more than five, six, seven, maximum eight minutes at a time. And for a young dog like this who's not even a year old, he's maybe 10 months old now, I'm his attention span is short, so I'm not going to ask for too much. But let's say that I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop the leash and I'm going to move away, right? So I'm going to move away. I can't get him to do everything that I want him to do for the sake of the video, but let's just say he started to move out. So if he starts, you can tell he's a, he's a little bit uncomfortable. He's not quite sure what I want, but he's not moving off the board. But if he were, <laughs> if he, this is the only way I can teach this, if he were to move off the board, then what I would do is I would move into him, okay? And I would use maybe some sound. There we go. Some sound. I'm not going to use his name, but I'm just going to use some sound and just use some spatial pressure to move into him. And once he gave me what I wanted, including eye contact, which is amazing, I'm going to back off. So I applied some spatial pressure. He yielded to that pressure, and I released the pressure. Pressure, yield, release. Okay, so I'm not going to continue to stand here like this. He's not going to understand what that means, and there will be no real reward for him for complying with what I ask him to do. So what I'm, what I'm going to do then is every day I'm going to ask a little bit more in increments. So next time I do this place work with him, I might step out further. Maybe later on in that day, I'll, I'll, after I rest him, I'll take him out again. And this time, um, this time what I'll do is I'll actually put him on the place board and then maybe I'll walk down the road a little bit. So then he'll have even a harder time maintaining his composure and staying on the place. Now another, another thing, this is another trick that you can do. That makes it a lot easier for you to um, work with a dog when you're working by yourself. Let's say this is my house. It's the deck in front of my house. But let's say this is my house, and there's my door, which you can't see. But let's just say this is the front door over here, and this is my living room, and I have a dog that's super reactive when people ring the doorbell. And I'm by myself. What am I going to do? I can't be chasing the dog all over the place, and I can't ask, ask my guest to wait for 20 minutes <laughs> until I get the dog where I want him to be, right? So here's what I did. I've got my place board here, which could also be a pillow, a, a, a blanket, whatever it is that your dog hangs out on during the day. So this just happens to be a professional place board, which is what a lot of trainers use because it's easy to carry around. It's lightweight and it's up off the ground, so it, it's a more obvious place for your dog to go to. So let's say that I put him on the place, Elliot, place, and then what I'm going to do is I have another Lucas Agnew lead right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this lead on him. All right, silly. And what this is going to allow him to do is actually break the command but not get too far from me. So let's see. Maybe we can get lucky and he'll actually come off the place. Ah, perfect. What a good dog. So now he's partially off. So what am I going to do? Am I going to punish him? No. I'm going to just move into him like that. That's all it took because he's sensitive to spatial pressure from me because that is what I've taught him. When I move into you, I want you to yield and then I will release the pressure. Okay, so that's, that's how it works in a nutshell. I hope that was some good information that you can use. We're gonna do some more things like this uh, later in the week, possibly even tomorrow. I might do another one. The weather's great now, as you can see. Um, so that's what you do. Bottom line is, in everything in life, don't ask too much of yourself. Don't ask too much of your dog especially. Your dog doesn't have the option of knowing that you're asking too much of him. You do. So if you want to succeed in whatever it is you do, take baby steps every day. Celebrate the baby steps when you do well at something. And you, before you know it, you will, have, you will have absolutely mastered whatever it is that you wanted to master. Okay? You don't have to do it overnight. Don't beat yourself up if you don't get it right the first time. Success isn't just this. Success is like this. It's all over the map. And then one day you look down and you've, you've accomplished what you wanted. So it's an ongoing process. As long as I've been training for 18 plus years now, I'm a better trainer now than I was a year ago. I'm probably a better trainer now than I was a month ago. 
because I have every time I, I, I train a student or I work with a client I teach myself more things because I have another dog that I can deal with with a slightly different issue than maybe the dog that I worked with before so I have to learn I have to create a strategy for how I work with that dog so whether you are a civilian dog owner or whether you are a dog trainer it doesn't matter whether you're just somebody that that deals with dogs in a in your work and as a groomer or a dog walker or whatever same things apply in life ask for small increments be successful at those and then move on to the next thing all right so I'm Sherry Lucas. Always remember to lead with love, and I hope to talk to you guys soon. Okay? Bye.